After all this time and all of the journeys we've gone on in Halo, we decided we would finally take a crack at trying to play Cursed Halo, especially because we can play it co-op. Surely things can't be that wild, right? And I'll be honest, we didn't really know what we were getting into, but we were optimistic since we could play it co-op and surely how bad could it be? To add a little spice to this, we decided to play it on Legendary Difficulty, and if you don't know what Cursed Halo is, we didn't really know what it was either. I mean, we had seen like maybe a couple of thumbnails showing like a goofy looking warthog and people being like, oh no, it's cursed. And that was about it going into it. So we were kind of not sure what to expect. Okay, but before we go any further, big shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for people who want to learn new skills or take their existing skills to the next level. If you've ever watched our videos, you probably know that a lot of editing goes into each and every video, and Skillshare is awesome because there's a lot of different classes on there that can help us directly. For example, the class Advanced Video Editing with Adobe Premiere Pro by Jordi Vandeput helped refine some of our editing skills, while we also learned some things we didn't even know about the editing software that we have been using for such a long time. For instance, we've always had issues with having very large files that make our editing software move slower, and since some of our runs are like four to five hours long, having a class that taught us how to use proxy files made it so much easier to import large files. Anyways, Skillshare is a great learning platform to learn any type of skill like editing, writing, photography, directing, and much more, and the first 1,000 people to use our link will get a month free trial of Skillshare. Loading in on Pillar of Autumn, we got our first taste of what this would be like, and for the most part, things seemed to pretty normal. I mean, this cutscene was different, to say the least, but it, uh... I don't know. It was goofy. I liked it though. I thought it was going to be more of like a comedic run through Halo. I did not expect some of the bigger mechanic changes that ended up coming with this game. We first made that realization when Captain Keys gave us a magnum that made us shoot ourselves every time we shot. And we still didn't fully understand it well after we were taking damage and not hurting anything in the process. Oh boy, things are really interesting on this level. We got a huge taste of the new changes to the weapon sets that would be fluent for the entire campaign of Halo Combat Evolved, and it would drastically change our approach to how we took on clearing out each level as we progressed through the game. Things are interesting in this world. The assault rifle shoots very slowly and progressively gets faster and faster and faster and faster and faster until it explodes. The plasma pistol now has two versions. There's the regular plasma pistol that doesn't work the way that it normally does. It charges up forever if you try to overcharge it, and if you get it around halfway, it it will shoot a hunter shot out of the plasma pistol instead. Though, if you charge it up all the way, it will straight up just nuke the entire room. There also was this heart plasma pistol that shoots little hearts and can lock on a lot easier and quicker. I think we noticed the plasma rifle was like a doom gun or something, shooting little 16-bit looking sprites and getting to punch things was interesting. We also found that plasma grenades are interesting because the explosions can go everywhere. But other than that, we were doing pretty well clearing out the rooms. I definitely was having way too much fun using the nuke feature on the plasma pistol, and though we did get lost in the tunnels that may or may not have been our own fault and not a result of Cursed Halo itself, I'm still not sure. I don't know, these tunnels we were lost in for an excessively long time. I'd like to think that maybe they changed things, but it is also very possible that we just got lost because we are bad at Halo. But yeah, despite all of the wackiness that happened through this, we managed to clear the first level, and we're ready to see what we were going to be facing with next. Halo was interesting, I found this flame thrower that actually shoots water, so that was interesting. Also, the water out in the distance looked grainy for whatever reason. We were absolutely terrified when we saw banshees flying over the hills, but this time they were flapping their little wings. I don't even know how to think about this or what to think about this. Okay, then there's this grenade that is new in this, and instead of a grenade, it's like a 1 in 20 dice, and you throw it and something happens, and every time it's different, meaning it's one of the least reliable grenades I've ever seen in my life, you can have weird things happen like spawn in a bunch of enemies. Maybe a bunch of explosions will go off that are way crazier than the initial explosion. Sometimes they would just drop a random Minecraft weapon, and that's cool. I mean, we found diamond axes and I even had a bow and arrow at one point. They're not the most effective things. Now in general, Luke and I aren't the most pro Halo Combat Evolved players, especially Legendary difficulty. You guys all know how we struggled through Lasso, and even regular Legendary would put up quite a big challenge for us. So we really 
really were starting to like this nuke plasma pistol that we kept using to try to clear out the enemies as quickly as possible. We ended up getting this extra long warthog to drive around in, which was interesting. At one point, I was pretty sure that the warthog was long enough just to make a bridge across this gap, though it was easy enough to cross this bridge. We made our way to the next area. We kind of just drove through in a random order, just nuking everything, whether they were friendly or enemies. That seemed to work pretty well, surprisingly. So it was probably a strategy we'd be taking moving forward. Truth and reconciliation. This level is the bane of our existence. We hadn't played on this level since literally we did the lasso level run of this and uh, it was fun. We definitely spent way too long on this and we were stuck for very long times. We also found it really interesting that our sniper rifle right off the bat was kind of floppy. I don't know. It was a little bit interesting. I did have a lot of fun getting to use my plasma pistol and Luke got to take a break from playing Halo for a large section of time because during the section where a ton of enemies drop out before you go into the ship. There's just a lot of stuff going on and Luke decided to stay back in the cave being a respawn point while I would go and just set off as many nukes as possible, dying in the process over and over and over and over and over again. And uh, we eventually did clear it. The hunters were a little wild, but we were able to kill them. Later, we found out that the red plasma pistol is kind of like this miniature Spartan laser that makes this interesting pew pew noise but otherwise we just continued on with the level. Once we got inside, things did change a little bit. Luke took over and kind of being the lead with the plasma pistol and having some fun clearing out some of the enemies. And after that, we had to remember how to navigate our way through truth and reconciliation, which wasn't really all that bad. At one point we threw a grenade and a master chief spawned doing the Rick Astley dance at music and all. Here's that moment. Never gonna give you up splank down there. And there's a warthog down there. Yeah, what the they're, fuck? They're all fighting Master Chief who's dancing the Rick Roll. You see him? You can see him from yeah, where I'm standing. I see him. We progressed deeper into truth and reconciliation until we finally found keys. We had to be careful also because the needler shots for whatever reason just keep bouncing around and they never dissipate and they make these really annoying squeaking noises whenever they're shooting. Keys really likes to die also so we had to be careful in making sure we weren't just running ahead because he'd just find a way to die. I ended up staying back while Luke led the way and Luke was actually able to trigger the early exit of this level helping us clear this part out but before we could fully leave truth and wreck we we noticed that the cutscene of the spirit flying out in the background, sure enough, you could just ever so slightly hear Rick Astley's never gonna give you up still playing in the background as that new Master Chief had just been dancing that the entire time. Wait, Rick Astley is still playing. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, here too. Next, we're going into Silent Cartographer, and things are off to a pretty great start. Luke was instantly murdered by the level somehow. We don't really know how, and he was just stuck down on the beach. Somehow he respawned, and the pelican flew in. Later on, when we died and had to reset, he was just dead this whole time. But nonetheless, when we finally did survive this opening intro cutscene, we noticed that there was a little miniature warthog dropped off for us to make this level a little bit easier, and we, being the geniuses that we are and being super familiar with Halo speedrunning decided, hey, let's just take the shorter route around, taking the speedrunners route. It'll be totally easy. We drove this interesting warthog with Luke just riding on the back through this section by the water. And then afterwards we were at the little uphill part where all the enemies are. And this section was really tough. Our first time driving up actually was really successful. We managed to just make it through all the enemies without just instantly dying. But one thing I didn't expect was for this warthog to be incredibly difficult to control. So when we were curving around the edge, these jackals randomly popped up. And you may know that Combat Evolved doesn't have sniper jackals, but Cursed Halo does. These jackals were rocking UNSC sniper rifles for whatever reason, which freaked me out. So as I turned around the corner and tried to slow down, the momentum kept the warthog going and we fell off the cliff. Okay, so we had less help this time and we had to drive around and try to go back up the hill again. And this whole section was definitely much harder, having less health. We ended up dying here so many times it was actually really frustrating we weren't sure if we were going to be able to get that lucky run where we could make it up the hill again we tried different techniques clearing out some enemies that didn't seem to make too much progress also when we threw a grenade at one point a buff version of riku from kingdom hearts randomly spawned in and he had this force field energy that wouldn't let us pass by we finally did find a little route around up by the rock but for the most part this section was pretty much impossible with the amount of health that we had so 
well, unfortunately, we had to restart the level back at the beginning and try again because it just wasn't looking like we were going to be able to get up this hill. This time around, when we pushed through after a little bit of trial and error, we eventually had a run where we were able to drive up the hill. And next time around, I tried not to get killed by the jackal snipers. Somehow we also had Luke separated from me. I don't know what happened. He was just gone for a while, but he did meet up with me. From there, we would run out, avoiding all of the enemies. I tried not to get murdered by the hunters with not the best of luck, but Luke did manage to get his way out, and then we just had to drop off this cliff to save some time. We found a backwards rocket launcher. Didn't know how to use it. It didn't seem to work as reliably as we hoped, but then we got in the warthog and we drove to the next place we were supposed to be, which ended up being another death trap. We were stuck there for a really long time. Just a lot of enemies, and it really was too challenging to fight. These jackals just snipe you instantly. Though I had one lucky run where I just took the warthog and just drove right in there and I actually survived and I was able to respawn Luke on me on the inside. So we just skipped it and that was cool. Going down, we decided to try another speed running trick that we remembered where we could perfectly land on this ramp and survive. I actually managed to pull it off first try and Luke, well, <laughs> You know, he almost got it. Not quite. From there, we dropped it down below, activated the button, and all we had to do was make our way back up to the top, which was no easy task. I can save us the time of explaining it, but essentially, I would just run up a little bit, try to nuke the enemies with my plasma pistol, die, then run up again, try to nuke the enemies with my plasma pistol, and die. And Luke just got to hang out, chatted with our chat on twitch.tv forward slash rocket sloth, and eventually, I did clear enough rooms where we could move up a little bit, and finally, after just doing this for the longest time, avoiding a elite that had a diamond Minecraft sword, which is deadly. We did make our way to the top of the surface, and we just had to make a dash to the pelican, which we did, and we were able to finally get past this level. But at this point, we're starting to realize that Cursed Halo Combat Evolved is definitely a much bigger challenge than we thought, and maybe we were regretting picking Legendary difficulty at this point. Nonetheless, we were going to move on, and next up, we had to go to Assault on the Control Room, one of the longer levels of Halo Combat Evolved. But there is a massive problem when it comes to Assault on the Control Room. Now, typically when we do challenges like this, especially ones that are a little bit harder, there's a pretty massive skip you can do on this level, which makes Assault on the Control Room really easy. Typically, we just kind of run out, do this little dance jiggle, and a Banshee will fly by, and the Elite will just randomly jump out of the Banshee. Now, there's other strategies out there. There's some really challenging solo speedrunning tricks where you can just jump off and perfectly land in a cool way, and you can survive jumping over the bridge, something that we have never been able to do, but if we can't find a way down, we would have to fight through all the enemies, which would make this level significantly harder, especially if it's anything like the previous level. The problem with this level is in a recent Master Chief Collection patch, they adjusted the AI in Halo Combat Evolved to be more closely to the original Xbox release of the game, not the PC port, and because of that little tweak somewhere along the lines of the AI, the trick to get the Elite to jump out of the Banshee no longer works. So this trick that we've relied on for other challenges like lasso can't be done anymore. So we had to rely on a different trick, which would be us trying to leap off of the bridge, but that's not that easy either. Eventually we did remember we had this old strategy way back when we first started doing Halo challenges and videos where one person drops down to the higher section. And if the other player drops off to his death as the other player dies falling to his death and they land and bounce off of this ledge at the same time, time, it could cause the other player to respawn on this ledge, which then puts you in a surviving distance to get down below, which took a little bit of practice and a little bit of trial and error, but we did eventually get to do this, which saved us a ton of trouble on this level. From there, we were able to take the mini warthog again and just drive straight through majority of this level towards the later section. We got in a banshee, flew it up top, and for the most part, just navigated through the little hallways up here, and we were able to clear this level in not that long of a time. We we're pretty proud of it considering how challenging this seems to be. But next was Guilty Spark and the introduction of the Flood. Now, I'll be honest, this level, we were unsure how the Flood would work in a cursed setting. And as it turned out, this level wasn't that bad. And I'm gonna say this in retrospect, it's a little surprising how not so bad it was because what happens later on is a little bit weird. But we were able to navigate through this without too much trouble. We did think it was interesting that the Marine shot himself because the Magnum in this game shoots back 
backwards when we walked in and he was scared. So uh, that was new, but otherwise we did all of that. I did get to use a diamond Minecraft sword for a bit and that thing just completely kills the flood in a really cool way. That was fun to use while I had it. And we also were starting to get more used to with a new sandbox of weapons with just the way that these things work and how funny it can be at times. They can have their usefulness as well. So with Guilty Spark, more or less just a walking simulator with some survival aspects. When we got to the outside part, we did use the shotguns to bounce out of bounds. So we didn't have to worry about the influx of the flood out of the mission or the mission area. All in all, we were able to get through this level and the best part is we definitely, no matter what anyone else tells you, did not get lost when we played through this level. Not at any point. Next was the library. And this is where I was kind of pointing out the flood isn't necessarily that easy. And we actually went into this thinking we would have an easy time. We know some speed running tricks. We have all these really powerful weapons. Yeah, the library doesn't care. It is a very challenging level. So hard to the point that we actually at times were concerned that we might not even be able to get out of the first area. Seriously, we were stuck in the first room for so long to the point where I thought we were just gonna lower the difficulty or just quit. We decided to push on and just continue to try different strategies. We tried a couple of glitches to bypass enemy spawns. At the end of the day, it just was not the most reliable. And the problem with this level is as you progress, while you do have powerful weapons like a plasma pistol that can just nuke all the enemies in the room and kill yourself in the process, the thing is this level progressively spawns in more flood based on random triggers along the way. So a lot of the time I would run in, kill a bunch of enemies and then we would push up and then all of a sudden there'd be a bunch more enemies because more would spawn in after the first wave or two. So this ended up being more closely to our legendary runs or actually our lasso runs in just the challenge of this level. It was really difficult. We did have one point where we had a ghost because a grenade throw gave us a ghost but the ghosts spin like a bait blade here so it wasn't really the most useful thing to use for too long but I definitely did have fun trying to make it work. It just wasn't the best thing. We did eventually push through and kind of get a system that worked where Luke would stay back as a respawn point. I would try to kill a couple of enemies or clear the way. And from there, we would move up together. There were a couple of times where having the shotgun was very handy because it could give us a little bit of a bounce and we could fly past some of the enemies. And occasionally I would get hit by a shotgun flood, which would launch the flood in the opposite direction away from me and give me a push, which is kind of this double bonus. The worst parts by far were some of the holding out sections where we just had to try to stay alive. We did know of a couple corners that can kind of help you stay alive. We utilized those where we could. Otherwise, this was just a lot of copy and paste the same looking areas over and over again and fighting the same type of enemies very slowly. The tunnels were the scariest parts because there's a lot of explosions and we didn't really have the best weapons to use, but we were able to stay alive using respawn tricks and whatnot. We didn't have to fortunately rely on some crazy lasso strategies that we had to do in the past, like backpack reloading or something like that. That. So that was at least a little bit better. Otherwise, the unreliance of grenades and not having normal weapons did make this a really, really hard level. We were just pretty happy when we finally made it to the fourth floor, knowing that we were almost done. We pushed through the top floor and things were getting more chaotic than ever. We have this firefight section we're supposed to hold out on. Then Guilty Spark opens the door. Luke made a run for it. I randomly died. There was a bunch of enemies chasing Luke and he was just running for his life. And he did manage to get to the little beam at the end, which triggers the end of the level, meaning that after after all of that, we finally made it through the library. It definitely didn't mean we were out of the woods just yet because we still had three more levels left and we didn't know what we were even getting into. Starting things off on two betrayals, it was a little bit difficult right away with these sentinels that kept killing us and they were kind of a pain. The next area we were planning on just abusing nukes for the rest of the level, but we did get lucky throwing the D20 grenade and got a banshee, which meant we could just fly ahead, which was a little bit nice. We did make it up to the cliff, killing some of the enemies. We were able to run in and hit that first reactor thing without too much of a problem. The main thing that we ran into from there though was our checkpoints just stopped working. After this, we got a checkpoint and I don't think we got another checkpoint for quite a while later in the level. So we were stuck in this loop of us trying to make it down to this lower bridge, killing the enemies, running in there, dying somewhere along the way in the indoor section just to have to go all the way back to this point. So for the most part, pushing through this room was very slow and tedious because we had to be extra careful because we didn't know if we were going to ever get reverted. We nuked the rooms using the plasma pistol where we could, but one thing we did notice is as we started to really progress into the deeper sections of the level, we noticed that the flood themselves 
actually aren't as challenging in this level compared to the library as the weapons that a lot of the time that they use end up hurting them more than they hurt us. For instance, some of the flood that hold the magnum will shoot themselves in the head, the shotgun will launch them back, and the rocket launcher just blows up behind them. That was one nice thing. We didn't run into the same type of overwhelming amount of flood that we ran into on the library, but there's still a lot of covenant also in these places, and those guys definitely don't mess around. We were very surprised at one point that we realized that this warthog that we found here was actually a hovercraft and could fly. That was very unexpected. It was really cool though. We were just flying around trying to figure out how to steer this thing and has really interesting physics that are built into flying this thing, but also it's still built on the Halo physics engine, so you can kind of imagine what it's like. But I was really impressed. Whoever made this flying warthog did a really good job putting this into the game. We did manage to progress to the level more until we got to the big cave section where we had to abandon our warthog and go in on foot. This room was a little bit wild. There's just a lot going on here. Uh, we eventually did clear it out and continue forward to the final big outdoor stretch. From there, there was a lot of flood, so we used the nukes a bunch. And when we got to the final stretch of the level, we wanted to use our shotguns to just try to launch our way overhead, but it really wasn't working. And we kept dying here over and over again. We had really just spent a long time stuck on this level. So we decided just to take it slow and start nuking the area with the plasma pistol. Though the one thing that was really interesting was in one of our nukes, we ended up launching the Banshee closer to us, which meant we didn't have to worry about the wraiths and stuff that were at the end because all of a sudden the Banshee was closer. Luke was able to make a run for the Banshee and fly to the end of the level. And just like that, after spending like an hour and some change on this level alone, we managed to get through two betrayals, but we still had keys and the Maw coming up. And I'll be honest, when we got to Keys, I was not expecting this. Now, things right away seemed a little weird when we loaded in. We walked around for a bit. There was a weird shotgun just laying around that didn't seem right. I don't know. We jokingly talked about using the flood bump trick where you have a flood and you bump through the map to get to the other side faster. We noticed the flood wasn't here. Usually there's a scene where a grunt is running away from a flood and we noticed it wasn't there. So that was interesting. Nonetheless, we continued forward realizing there hadn't been any enemies yet. Luke decided to jump down to load the next part of the level, thinking that we had an easy time with this first section. And as it turned out, Luke just fell to his death. Yeah, things were really broken here. We were going to reset the level, but as it turned out, someone in the chat mentioned that in the earlier version of Cursed Halo, the version that we're playing here, the original version, there is no keys level. Actually, it's because in the lore of Cursed Halo, Keys is already dead. What? How did we miss that piece of lore when we were playing through? I guess when we were on Guilty Spark, we missed a cutscene that has Keys die off early in Halo Combat Evolved, so since we realized that, we decided to go back and play through the first half of Guilty Spark just to see what happened in that cutscene. And sure enough, when the Flood is attacking during the Jenkins cutscene, Keys has the backwards magnum and, well, he oofs himself right there. Thus, there is no need for the level keys to even exist. I guess we're skipping the whole like password thing that Master Chief needs to activate the Pillar of Autumn's engines. So we were just going straight onto the Maw, which was kind of interesting. Now at this point, we're already feeling like pro cursed Halo players and navigating along wasn't impossible. Well, it wasn't impossible at first. We were making okay progress, though at one moment, Luke was feeling backed in a corner and threw the D20 grenade. And this grenade just makes a bunch of trees spawn. And we were stuck in this little corner here without any way to get out. I happened to have died, so I respawned in there with Luke, and we were stuck here without being able to fit through this little exit point. It was just small enough where Master Chief could not fit through. So it was looking like we are going to have to restart the level, though we decided we were going to try to find a way out of this for whatever reason. We tried messing around with the respawns, that didn't work, but we did have a single D20 grenade left. So we thought if we kept throwing the grenade, maybe we would get something that could help us get out of this little corner. Eventually though, we did get a ghost spawn or an elite with a ghost and we ended up using that ghost to get just close enough to the opening here and we killed the elite and I was able to jump in the ghost clipping through this gap. We were able to actually get out of this section without having to start the entire level over. Further along in the level, there was some chaotic moments that would occasionally happen, but we were progressing along decently well. We did end up choosing 
choosing to do the glitch where you're about to go to the engine room where one person stays behind and it stops the enemies from loading in the next section. And while Luke was the one that stayed behind, so we don't have a lot of footage, this part was just a pain. I never seemed to have enough grenades. The rocket launcher shot backwards, but eventually I did get past it. On to the Warthog run. Oh boy. Now this was interesting and we definitely were not good at this part. We did have a couple of different options as to which Warthog we would get to use here. At first, I thought the tricycle Warthog was going to be the best bet as we hadn't driven one of these babies yet. So we tried and the handling on this thing is just absolutely atrocious. It did not work. We were pretty much at the point where we would have rather walked than try to continue to drive that thing, but we couldn't get up the hills. So yeah, we can rule this one out. We then tried the miniature Warthog, our favorite Warthog variant, and things are going pretty well for a bit. We did decide to stop and try to get a thumbnail picture. And I think we ended up kind of cutting into our time too much because we couldn't finish the level in time because we stopped for like 30 extra seconds. Yeah, it's looking like when we do this Warthog run, it is legendary. We do need to pay more attention to the clock. We don't have all the time in the world with how many enemies there are. Then there was the extra, extra long Warthog, the longest Warthog variant that we had seen so far. And we were excited to try that thing out, though we kept dying every time we were trying to get close enough to it. So that was a thing. We did eventually get the extra, extra long Warthog. And you know what? It, uh, it didn't really handle quite as well as we hoped it would. So then after all of that, we decided to take the miniature Warthog again, because that seemed to be our favorite out of all of them. And for the most part, it is probably the best option for going through this section. It was still really challenging and we still were cutting it very close. I had the bright idea when we got to the Pelican part to grab another miniature Warthog that was parked back there. So then if one person died or flipped off, the other person could finish, but that ended up eating into the time so much, the time it took me to walk, that I would have had no chance of even making it to the end because of how far away the miniature Warthog was. So it was really up to Luke to finish this run out and it was so close, so down to the wire, he finished with three seconds left on the clock before the entire Pillar of Autumn exploded. Thus, we were able to say that we completed Cursed Halo on Legendary Difficulty and boy, what an experience that was. Now, it is interesting, Cursed Halo has had more iterations made over time. Some versions are a little bit different and have different memes and whatnot. And also the ability of co-op is kind of questionable. So that's why we went with this original version. There's apparently a Cursed Halo 3 in the works. And while we haven't really dabbled with Halo modding all that much yet, it might be something we want to look to in the future, depending on how people feel about this video. So maybe you can let us know. But anyways, thanks so much to our patrons for making this video even possible. If we didn't have the support on Patreon, we probably wouldn't be testing out different types of video ideas like Cursed Halo. And thanks to everyone on twitch.tv forward slash rocket sloth who watched that night, subscribed, and supported us over the nights we were playing Cursed Halo. If you're new, make sure you subscribe to notifications on for more videos like this. And that's it for today. We'll see you next time with a brand new video.